So after a little while there, our environment is now running here. Let's take a look to see if it's working. And there you go. We're running on Docker. It was that easy. Uh, the thing with Elastic Beanstalk is that it did all the work for us. We just had the Docker file in here. And when we uploaded it, it did all the work. It built the image for us. Uh, but normally what you'd have to do is build the image yourself and then push it to an actual um, Docker repository. That could be Docker Hub. Or in the case of AWS, you can use Elastic Container Registry ECR. And that's what we're going to do because um, that's a more uh, complex setup and the more common setup that people will be using because most people outgrow um, this Docker file, this simple setup here. Uh, in order to do that, what we're going to need to do is um, create a new file called a Docker run AWS.json file. And we're going to have to build an image and push it to ECR. But before we do that, let's just make a revision to our actual code base here. Uh, and we will go to app.js and we'll call this version three. And the next thing we will do is we'll go ahead and build our Docker image. So I'm going to type in docker build hyphen T study sync period. So this is going to build a Docker image. And it's going to name it study sync. So we'll just wait here a little bit. And there it is. It's done. That was fast. The next thing we need to do is we need to um, authenticate to ECR. And this is a very long command. So we'll get to it. It's AWS ECR get login password um, pipe docker login hyphen hyphen username AWS hyphen hyphen password stin. We're going to have to provide our account ID here. Um, I don't know what my account ID is for this account. We need to poke around. We should be able to find it somewhere. It's generally under my account settings. I just don't want to uh, show all of my billing information here. So another easier way, we'll just go make our way over to IAM. I feel like that's always a place where we see our account number. We should see it anywhere. We'll just go into even a user here. Here's one. Our account number is everywhere. And I just need part of it there. So I'm just going to paste it over here and then extract it out. And then what we need to do is provide it as such. And then we need to uh, type in this URL. So we need dkr.ecr. And then we need uh, the region we're operating in. So US East 1. Dot Amazon AWS.com. If you're wondering how I got this whole link, it's in the AWS documentations for ECR. So th what this is going to do is log us in and, and generate us out a, um, a token so we can authenticate. So it says there's an unknown flag named user. So I'm just going to double check that there. It's actually supposed to be username. So we'll go ahead here and type this in. And here it says that it's created that credentials helper file. So there you go. So notice that it's created a file here called dot uh, uh, or a, a hidden file called docker config.json. And that's what's storing the token, which is going to help us to authenticate. So let's take a look at the actual images that are here. And we can see that we have our image that is built here. And we're going to get have to get this image ID next. And what we need to do is tag this docker image. So I'm going to put in that uh, image ID. We need our account ID again here. And it's actually the same link here. So it'd probably be easier if I just copy that out like that. And then we need to specify the uh, name. And so now that it has been tagged, what we can do is do Docker push. And I believe it is the same URL here. So let's copy this. And it says here that the repository does not exist with this ID. So um, maybe what we should do is make our way over to um, ECR and just maybe we need to make the repo beforehand. I always forget this, so I guess we'll find out. I thought we would just create it for us. Um, nope, I guess not. So we'll just type in study sync here. I'll hit uh, create repository. Then we'll make our way back to cloud nine, just hit up. 
And there we go. It's uploading our Docker image. It's kind of like GitHub. This is an incredibly small uh, Docker image, so it's not taking too long, which is really nice. One advantage of using Node.js over other um, languages and frameworks. So I'll just wait here a little bit, and I'll see you back in a moment. So our uh, Docker image is now uh, built and pushed to our ECR repo here. So if we go in here, we can see that we have it. Uh, and the next thing is to prepare our actual, um, uh, this next environment here. And instead of working with this one, because it's going to be um, uh, a lot of work here, we're just going to make a new folder. So once you go cd cd dot, or just go actually here to cd tilde forward slash environment, we're going to make a new directory and we can call it study sync external. And what I want you to do is make a new file in here. So we'll just cd into this. And we're going to call it docker run .json. If you've ever seen a task definition file, it's extremely similar. And uh, in this um, developer social course, we definitely cover how to deploy um, with ECS and Fargate. So this will become uh, extremely familiar to you shortly. But what we need to do is open up that file. Uh, I made it as a directory. That was an accident. I should have made that a file. So I'm just going to remove that. And instead of doing um, mkdir, I'm going to type in touch. Okay, and then we can just open up that file there. And what we're going to do is um, write some JSON. So the first thing we need to do is define the Docker version uh, for EBS here. So Docker run version. Just going to double check, make sure that is correct. Yep, that is right. And we're going to specify version one. Version one is for um, single con uh, single containers. When you do multi container, you do version two. Then we need to specify the image. And that's going to be uh, the URL we were seeing there earlier. I feel like we could grab that from ECR. Yep, it's pretty much the same thing here. I just want this part of it. I don't know if I need to put latest in there. I want to put that in there. We have to specify the ports. So we'll go ahead here and do that. So it knows what to map to. And in that, we will do this. A little bit of cleanup here. I'm just going to double check to make sure everything is right here. Sometimes it's easy to miss these commas. Um, it looks all correct to me, so we're in good shape. Uh, the next thing we need to do is initialize a git repo here. So we're going to do git init. And uh, we're going to copy over a couple files. So we want to bring over our git ignore eb extensions file and our nvar.config file, I think. So we will go ahead and do that. Um, I'm just trying to think of the easiest way to do this. Probably just make the files again. So I'm going to just type touch.gitignore. And then we will do, uh, we'll make a new directory called eb extensions. And then we will touch um, eb extensions 001.nvar config. Um, and I think that's the only two files we need to move over. So we will go to our old one here. Um, and it has some Elastic Beanstalk st uh, uh, stuff in here. And then we'll just take all of it. That's totally fine. And we'll go to our new one here and paste that in. And we said we need to set this as well. So we'll go to our old one, copy that, paste that, paste that there. And now that we have those files in there, I want you to do is go ahead and do a git status. So we have three files. That's great. Git add, git commit hyphen m, docker run. And we need this. We need a uh, git repo because it's going to um, create a new one when we run uh, eb init here in a moment. So I'll just do git status, make sure that all worked fine. Great. And we will do eb init. So we're going to choose US East 1, so number 1. We are going to create a new application, so press 2. We are going to stick with the name that we are given here, so hit Enter. Uh, we are definitely using Docker, so we'll hit Yes. Uh, we want to use Cocommit, sure, so we'll hit Y. 
Um, we need to select a repo. We are making a new repo, so press 2. Enter the repo's name. This is going to be called study sync external. Make sure you type it right. Uh, we are going to want it to be master branch, so hit enter. Um, we don't need to SSH in, that's okay. And so there we go. Um, so now that that is created, I'm just going to go up, double check and make sure that is the case. So we'll make our way over to code commit. And here we have our external repo. So it's all in good shape. So now that that's all set up, we should be able to create a new environment. So we'll do eb create hyphen hyphen single. Uh, we will name it pretty much the same. I'm just going to take off the dev part on it. Doesn't matter too much as long as you uh, can remember what you set it to. Uh, we'll say no for spot instances. And what we're going to do here is just wait a little bit here. It's nice to see the message, just make sure that it's creating what we want to create. Um, and this is, yep, a Docker image. So hopefully this works uh, first try. I'm going to make my way back to Docker here. We'll go over here. Uh, and while that's going, we can go ahead and terminate this one. We don't need this one anymore. And just to point out, like, look at this. This doesn't contain any of our code. So where is our code? Our code is part of the actual Docker container. That's why we don't see it here. Because when we built it, it copied it and put it into the actual container. Whereas in this setup, the Docker file is here. And so we can work with our source code and have it all in one place. Um, so you just have to decide, you know, what workflow works best for you. And, you know, if you can get away with just having a Docker file like that, that's definitely better. Um, and this is creating. I'm just going to go back here and do a refresh. I don't see this new environment yet. Should be called external, right? Um, study sync external. Oh, here it is. Yeah, because it's a completely new application. That's totally fine. So yeah, I'll see you back here in a moment once this environment is done creating. All right, so our deploy is done, but we have health degraded, and it looks like we have an error here. It turns out um, Elastic Beanstalk can't authenticate to ECR because we didn't give it permissions to do so. Whereas in Cloud9, we had pulled that um, uh, the, the credentials and stored it in here so that we could read from ECR. So what we need to do is update the instance profile um, of the actual EC2 instance that runs uh, here. So what we'll need to do is make our way over to IAM. So just type in IAM here. We'll open this in a new tab. On the left-hand side, we'll go to roles. Uh, we'll go to EC2 role here for Elastic Beanstalk. We're going to attach permissions. We're going to type in Amazon EC2 uh, read-only container. We'll attach that policy. So this should allow us to uh, gain access to ECR. Um, and then what we'll do is go back to Cloud9, and we'll simply do EB deploy. And so what that will do is it will just deploy again, um, but now it will also update the IAM role and it should have permissions this time around. So uh, we'll give it a second here to get started. We'll make our way back over to here. Uh, we'll do a refresh. And we can see this is in progress and I'll see you back here momentarily.